Hello, this is Yvonne Duregne from the NOAA Fisheries West Coast Region. This presentation is being recorded on August 23, 2018. It provides a video briefing for the September Pacific Fishery Management Council meeting on Agenda Item G1, the public review draft of the Western Roadmap Implementation Plan for the National Ecosystem-Based Fisheries Management Roadmap. During this presentation, I will provide you with links to the documents I mentioned at the bottom of the screen, like this. The Pacific Fishery Management Council is meeting in September in Seattle, Washington. They will be discussing ecosystem agenda items on Saturday, September 8th. They last discussed the National Ecosystem-Based Fisheries Management Roadmap in September 2016. The Council's comments on that 2016 draft National Roadmap are available in this September 2018 briefing book. The Roadmap covers an array of issues and ideas of interest to the country, but recognizes that different regions will have their own ideas about implementation. NOAA Fisheries staff at the West Coast Region and at the Northwest and Southwest Fisheries Science Centers collaborated to develop the draft Western Roadmap Implementation Plan for 2018 through 2022. All of the draft implementation plans are available on the NOAA Fisheries website shown on the screen. The draft Western Roadmap Implementation Plan is also in the Council's briefing book for this September meeting. As you are thinking about this plan, there are three general ideas to keep in mind. First, this draft plan is a NOAA plan and the public comment period ends on September 30th. That just means that if you aren't able to comment at the council meeting, there will still be opportunities to comment to NOAA. Second, this is a five-year regional plan to implement a much longer term national roadmap. We are conducting some of the work in our draft regional plan so that we can get our surveys, our labs, and our policy processes ready for future five-year periods. And third, the roadmap is a national plan, which means that it includes some work we may have already done here on the West Coast, but which other regions have yet to tackle. It also includes some work where we may be behind other regions. The national roadmap and the draft Western plan are organized around the same six major guiding principles. This first principle simply requires the agency to support the development of fishery ecosystem plans and the use of those plans in guiding ecosystem science and ecosystem-based fisheries management. Here on the West Coast, we've already met the major national goal of this guiding principle because the Pacific Council adopted its fishery ecosystem plan in 2013. Guiding Principle 2 asks the agency to better understand ecosystem processes and to share that knowledge with managers and the public. The California Current Ecosystem Status Report, produced cooperatively by the Northwest and Southwest Fisheries Science Centers, addresses part of this guiding principle, but the guiding principle also asks NOAA Fisheries to dig into its own ocean observing systems, its cooperative surveys, agency-led surveys, wet lab work, stock assessments, and other work to look at how well we're collecting and assessing the data needed to support things like the Ecosystem Status Report and ecosystem-based management, both now and into the future. Guiding Principle 3 is about evaluating how vulnerable our living marine resources and dependent human communities are to shifts in the marine and freshwater environments. Again, we've already addressed some of the requirements of this guiding principle with the habitat prioritization plan shown here. Looking forward, projects that will fall under the umbrella of this guiding principle include a variety of vulnerability and risk assessments, like the draft climate vulnerability assessments and all of the work of our social scientists to better understand the vulnerability of coastal communities to oceanographic shifts and to changing fisheries harvests. Guiding Principle 4 is about the choices we make, the trade-offs between the effects of our actions. The West Coast has had some experience in this type of work with the Sablefish Management Strategy Evaluation, and this briefing book includes another example of management strategy evaluation work in the briefing book section on informational reports. 
This guiding principle also asks us to test our ability to forecast ecosystem changes. We discussed some of the challenges and opportunities associated with short, medium, and long-term forecasting in early February as part of the science series that kicked off the Council's Climate and Communities Initiative. Guiding Principle 5 gives us avenues for bringing ecosystem science into management advice, which again we have already partially addressed with this Council through the Terms of Reference documents. But we're also interested in taking a deeper look into connective data and analyses, such as the more refined habitat assessment and diet work that we hope will allow us to both support and go beyond our annual ecosystem status report. Finally, Guiding Principle 6 ties all of these ideas together, looking for resilient ecosystems over the long term. Our Northwest and Southwest Fishery Science Centers have been exploring these connections between human and natural systems, and in the draft Western Implementation Plan, are looking to conduct further work in areas like the role of recreational fisheries in coastal communities, assessing groundfish landings consolidation under the quota program, the effects of phenomena like harmful algal blooms on our fisheries and communities, and looking at whether there are links between recreational fisheries participation and salmon hatchery practices. If you're interested in reviewing and commenting on the draft Western Roadmap Implementation Plan to the Council itself, they will be discussing this agenda item on Saturday, September 8th in Seattle. You may also wish to submit your comments to NOAA via the email address shown on the screen. The draft implementation plans are all available at that website shown below in yellow. The public comment period on this draft plan ends on September 30, 2018. Thank you for your time and attention.